Hey everyone, this is Jeff from Smartphones for Water, or S4W. S4W exists to mobilize young researchers, citizen scientists, and mobile technology to improve lives by strengthening our understanding and management of water. We are a growing global community of people passionate about stewarding the only water we've got. Together, we're measuring our water resources and sharing the data with scientists and politicians and anyone else who cares to listen because we can't manage a resource that we don't measure. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a homemade rain gauge. I'll put a link up here for some accuracy verification testing that we've done and a publication that highlights those results. For now, let's get started by looking at the materials you'll need. To build an S4W rain gauge, you need a soda bottle in good condition with perfectly cylindrical walls, no curvature in them. You also need a ruler or scale that's at least 200 millimeters long, scissors, knife, five millimeter diameter nail roughly, marker, and PVC glue. For the base, you'll use sand, cement, and water, and you'll need a way to mix them, something like this. First, take the scissors and remove the label off the soda bottle. Using the line at the bottom of the cylindrical portion, mark 200 millimeters in several locations around the bottle. If your soda bottle is not long enough to get 200 millimeters, Mark a different distance prior to the cylindrical shape starting to taper towards the lid. Once you have enough marks on there, you can use a knife like this one to puncture the bottle and then use scissors to finish off cutting the lid. Note that it's important to cut the lid as straight as possible and to cut it before the taper begins towards the lid. We're going to use a mixture of cement and sand to provide a level and weighted bottom to our gauge. You can use about this much sand filled up to that reference line and this much cement. First thing we're going to do is mix these two ingredients, the sand and the cement, in dry form until they're well mixed. Once they're well mixed, we're going to start to add a bit of water. Now it's easy to add too much water, so add the water slowly. What we're after here is to get the consistency of, say, a thick milkshake or perhaps some toothpaste. So don't overdo it and make it into your grandmother's favorite soup. Okay, it looks like we're just about there, and I think that's going to be a good consistency. Now we're going to use the lid of the rain gauge to funnel the mixture of sand and cement in. It's really important at this point that you have the gauge on a level surface and that you slowly add the mixture of sand and cement up until the reference line that we've been using at the bottom of the gauge. It's not the best idea to shake it like we just did there. You just want to leave it at that level surface and let it harden for at least one day. Before that mixture of sand and cement hardens on our lid, we're going to want to rinse that off. And then we're going to cut our scale or our ruler to that 200 millimeter length that we're going to use. Now if your gauge ended up being a little bit taller or shorter, it's fine to cut this at a different length. It's just important that you match the size of your rain gauge with the size of your ruler. And we're going to use this PVC glue to attach the scale to the rain gauge important to put this on the opposite side from the millimeter markings. And here's the critical point. We need to make sure the zero 
of the scale lines up perfectly with the top of the concrete base. That's very critical. Then we're going to put a hole in this cap. This hole is going to allow rainfall to enter into the gauge, but it'll minimize any evaporation losses that occur between the time that the precipitation event occurs and the time that we take our reading. You can remove this little white washer if you'd like to, but it's not necessary. You can also leave it there. Once you have this cap with the hole, you can put it on the top of your lid and invert this and place it into your soda bottle. And there you have it. You have a working S4W homemade rain gauge. Now it's up to you to install this gauge in a place that has a clear view of the sky, no obstructions or branches hanging over the gauge and to take measurements every morning between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m., whether it rains or not. Be sure to check out the rest of our tutorials on how to enter your data into Open Data Kit and other tips and tricks for taking rainfall measurements. Thanks for joining us. Now get out there and measure the rain.